Good evening and welcome to another night of Let's Talk Business. It is the last week in our series of Filipinos Breaking Through. Great show last week with Agnes Bothello. We have another great guest tonight who I'm so excited and you will be meeting shortly. But first, we're going to talk about business plans. Some entrepreneurs think that business plans are not needed. To me, it is essential when you're starting a business. You know, according to SBDC, a good business plan not only helps entrepreneurs focus on specifics, on specific steps necessary to succeed, it also helps them achieve short-term and long-term goals, objectives. To me, it acts like a blueprint and a measuring instrument to your success. So here are the top reasons why you should write a business plan. First, raise money for your business, right? So you're going to take that business plan to investors and try to convince them to invest in your business, or you take it to the bank and convince them that you have a sound plan, you're a great startup, and hopefully they'll lend to you. Second, make sound decisions. Your business plan, if it's done properly, will be backed by data and that, that you've spent a lot of time researching. Stick with that data. Obviously, there's a reason why you researched it. It's important. So to make sound decisions, always go back to the data that you have so it will give you a guide before you make a decision. Identify and, um, uh, any potential weakness for the business. I'm sure you will do a SWOT analysis on your uh, chosen business. You will learn every weakness or e every possible uh, opportunity of a loss uh, from that industry. So that's your guide on how or how to avoid that. And then fourth, it's your way of communicating your ideas to stakeholders. Again, either through investors, through a bank, or your actual clients. Whatever you write in that business plan will be your main, um, the, how do you do business, pretty much. That's your communication style to your stakeholders. Here's a few more tips. Before writing the business plan, consider two things. Who is your reader? Are they an investor or a lender? What does a positive response look like? So always have the end goal in the end. So if you're writing it for a, um, a, a bank loan, okay, you want an approval, of course. So there you go. Make sure you write it with lots of data because that's what bankers want. Actually, before I go get into that, I'll get a banker next time to talk about what they're looking for in a business plan. Number two, research your market thoroughly. You know, you want the best data possible. Banks or investors like that too. I'll give you an example. I saw a business plan one time and it was uh, a lady who worked in a completely different industry wanting to open up a pizza place. And the numbers that she had were astronomical. They were like, we call it pie in the sky numbers. Absolutely no way for a brand new business to achieve those kind of numbers. So it has to be good data, achievable, and true to the industry standard. Identify your competitors. Actually, I'll go even farther than that. Take a look at what they do best <laughs> and see if you can incorporate it to your style. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but you can always add your style to it. Pay attention to details. Details, details, details. Very, very important. Sometimes that is the difference of succeeding and failing, your attention to details. Focus on the opportunity your startup offers investors. So if your audience are startups or investors, Make sure you put in your business plan what's in it for them. How will they make money? Remember, that's what investors are looking for. How, how, will my, how am I going to be making money from this venture? Include important facts, both positive and negative. Don't just put positives. Include the facts that could be bad for your business too. It's a good way to avoid them anyway. It's just learning about them. Get your financial information right. I talked about that a little bit earlier where you need to make sure you have good numbers. Uh, I'll give you another example. I had a, a, uh, a business before that wanted to start and it was a dental practice, a brand new dental practice that wanted to open. And I kept on telling him, you cannot use numbers of an existing dental practice already because they already have set clients. You are starting from scratch. You have 
to gradually increase it because you're, you're, you're still going to do marketing. So again, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of places that you can get this information out there. Um, make sure you use the right information. Um, write a convincing executive summary, especially if you're giving this to an investor. Make sure, again, be clear on how you're going to sell, how you're going to run the business, how will they make money. Get a second opinion from a business advisor, uh, either an advisor, a mentor, somebody who's um, seasoned or somebody who's done this a lot, your CPA, business lawyer. Yeah, it's another one. And then, of course, the most important tip that I can give you, execute the plan properly. There's no use of having a plan if you're not going to execute it properly, right? Usually, there are two types of business plan. The traditional, which is the most common, uses st standard structure for uh, and full of details. And then there's the startup one, focuses only on summarizing the most important key points or key elements of the plan. It's probably good to write both of them anyway. The other one's just a one-pager. The last thing is, and let me give you some um, entities that can help you with business plans. So the SBA is one of them. In fact, if you go to their website, they have uh, they talk about business plans. They'll show you the different uh, two, the one that we talked about, the traditional versus the startup, and you can look at some examples or or or, or uh, what they call it, the outline of the business plan. SBDC is another one. Uh, you can enroll and engage your advisors, and then they can give you a lot of pointers. They can also help you with research on the data that you might need for financial uh, numbers. Score, same thing. Set an appointment with them. They have advisors that you can help you with that. You can always hire a business advisor. There's a bunch of them out there. There are specialty advisors if you're opening a particular industry, dentist, for example, they've got um, advisors that you can hire that have all the good data. There's UNLV School of Business. There's the Women's Business Center. There's Nevada. There's, my point is there's a lot of places where you can get help executing, writing and executing a business plan. But just remember, it is very, very important to have one. Uh, it, it, it could be the difference between getting a loan, getting an investor, being successful in your business. So make sure, write a business plan and, and write it correctly and execute it properly. All right, we're going to go to our first break. When we get back, we're going to introduce our guest for tonight. All right, we'll be right back. is your Filipino radio experience in Las Vegas. PHLV Radio. PHLV Radio. Welcome back. All right, I am excited to, in to introduce our last guest for the month. My guest for tonight owns her own law practice. It's Hallie Law. Um, she is a personal injury lawyer. And uh, let's welcome Lila Hale. Lila, how are you? Nice to, nice to be here with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming in for this segment. I appreciate you. And Okay, so let's talk about this. I, I know there's a lot of Filipinos that are lawyers. But there's not a lot of Filipinos who are, especially a woman, who are <laughs> personal injury lawyers. What made you choose this field? How did you think about, hey, you know what, I'm going to be a personal injury lawyer? So this is a question I think that it evolves, right? But in the beginning, I grew up with parents who were medical providers. My dad was a doctor. My okay. mom was a nurse. And I truly wanted to be a doctor. I enrolled in pre-med. And it turns out organic chemistry was not something that was like innately easy for me. <laughs> it's so, not for everybody. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, so I was a little disappointed in that, but I, I was really good at writing, arguing. Um, I loved people and I still wanted to take care of people. I didn't realize at that point that law would allow me to kind of be part of the medical profession still. Okay. And care for people. 
until, you know, until I actually started doing it. And when I, um, when I realized pre-law, I mean, pre-med was not going to be my, my end goal, um, you know, I started out with an English and a writing degree, a technical writing degree. So, so it was very, you know, I, I was able to put my writing to good use and my organization, which actually helps with the business planning, actually. There you go. Turns out that it helped in a business later. Um, and then when I finished um, doing that for a few years, I didn't feel fulfilled yet. And so I, I had an uncle that was a judge in the Philippines. And, and law was something that I had, it had been in my head because my college counselors had kind of put it in there too because they're like you know you're good at you have strengths here Mm -hmm. and and they you know i think it was two years after i graduated i got a christmas card from one of them and they said so how are you liking your work what are you doing and when are you going to go back to law school so that actually was the moment that Uh i decided i'd go sign up for that lsat and take the bar and then the rest is kind of history so. Planted a seed. They planted a seed. It's not as exciting <laughs> as knowing from birth, and but I do love it. So I'm okay. grateful that it's something that fulfills me. So. Well, tell us about your journey. We become okay. So you start law school, mm-hmm. um, then you decide. Okay, you finish law. I'm mm-hmm. gonna be a. I'm gonna be a personal injury lawyer. Has it been easy for you? Has it been? Mm-hmm. Tell me about the work. Tell me about how you got there. Yeah. I seem to not do things the easy way all the time. I, because I had a daughter already, I kind of, when I started my career in law, I wanted to do something that would allow me to still raise my kids. So, which was hard actually, right? Because a lot of legal jobs require you be there in person for everything. So I started in a, I didn't get to personal injury for a few years. I started out working kind of behind the scenes, writing for other lawyers, um, and, you know, finding a niche that was not one that required me to be in the office. And then, you know, when my kids got older, the I, I, I had a great friend who happened to work at, it's actually the largest personal injury law firm in Nevada. Wow. And I like them. They're great people. Mm-hmm. I, I went with her to one of her office events. And um, the next day she said, hey, one of the, one of the attorneys, they, they asked if they could get your number because they kind of want to strike out on their own and they want to be partners with you. And I wasn't a personal injury attorney yet at okay. that point. And I said, okay, give him my number. I'll, I'll talk to him. And um, they called me the next day. And if you can believe it, that moment is what perpetuated me into moving into like your own firm, your own practice, right. actually offering yourself out as the personal injury attorney, not just someone behind the scenes. So kind of a crazy way to get there, right? Yeah. Because I felt like yeah. there were other things in my life too that I – needed to make sure we're taken care of because you often feel like I think especially as a mother that you're either not doing enough for your family or not doing enough for work so for me it was that balance first and and that's personal for everyone I know that you know I know not everyone has that internal struggle that maybe I did but when my kids were older I felt like I can do this and dedicate that time and because I wanted to give 100% to both of them my children and my clients I didn't want to not feel good enough, like I wasn't giving enough. And so it was, we joke and say that it was kind of on a dare. So I, the business plan, it's it's hugely important. It would have been something that would have been very helpful then. It's something that developed after the fact, but I would advise everyone to do that beforehand. (laughs) So so not traditionally, but still a happy a happy surprise, you know. And that's amazing because you know, I, I, I got to tell you, it's you know the feeling that you get when you're like, okay, I'm gonna start out on my own. I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna get clients. One of the things I guess that I, it's very safe to say, perseverance is in your blood. So, talk about persevering to follow a dream, and then here you are. You know. <laughs> so I think in this town, especially. Almost every other billboard you drive by is for a personal injury attorney, and you've never seen me on one. Although I've heard that people tell, I've heard had people tell me they've seen me on one, but I've never been on one. Okay. So I, um, there's a lot of competition in this town. Yeah. But for me, it's always been about the personal relationships. Honestly, like I don't want to hear a client's file number. I want to know the person, and I want to know their case. Awesome. Because that's 
what matters is the relationship at the end of the day. And sometimes you might not be, you might not know the law better than everyone else, but when you know your case, you'll prevail. The law will help you, but you need to understand your case and your client. You need to live their experience. You need to understand it so that you can you can take care of them. Otherwise, you're not really advocating for them. So, gotcha. so that's the perseverance is it's the struggle that you're not always right the first time too. It's the, it's the it's the idea that wow, school was easy, you know, taking tests is easy and and I get these like little awards or applause with the grades after that <laughs> happens and when it's, you know, business and people's lives, mm -hmm. you don't get that and sometimes there are difficulties or roadblocks that you have to figure out a new plan for like each time because each person and their situation is different sure. all the time. So you become very vested and, and it takes a lot of sometimes dogged determination to get through some really challenging or, you know, difficult, um, legal or even business situations yeah. with clients uh, for clients. Okay, fast forward now. Mm -hmm. And don't be humble because I'm going to tell everybody you're a very successful lawyer. <laughs> I've, been to your, I've been to your office. She's got a great office. Your staff loves you. I love them. Yep. And, <laughs> um, and she makes it fun, by the way. <laughs> now tell me, when you see that now, you see you've you got a staff that loves you. You guys are working great together. How does that make you feel? Joy, relief, pride? There is a sense of... I think there's always a sense of I need to make sure that I keep improving it and making it better okay. so that I don't let this fail. Because yeah. you are the captain of your ship, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's the first time you've done something. A lot of times it's the first time you've done something. So a business plan, yeah. sometimes there isn't always one for every situation. There is always that that outline. Sure. But then all the contingencies that happen in between. So what do I think when I see it? I think I always believed I'd achieve whatever I wanted to achieve because that's kind of what our parents instilled in us. Awesome. And I wouldn't allow myself to fail. Awesome. I get told no. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes that just means I need to find another way to yes. You know, so <laughs> I'm surprised. Maybe never. Okay. But it wasn't easy. Yeah. It never was easy. There's always so many challenges and there's mistakes and there's learning from those that kind of make you stronger and smarter and better. Sure. But I didn't believe when I started practicing law that needing to understand business yeah. would have been as important as it, as it is. So like, it's, it's much more important than I ever anticipated. So. I love that statement. And, and you, that you repeat, I'm going to repeat the, what you said earlier. At first, I was a lawyer. And, and then now I'm a business person too. Why is that so important, especially in being a successful practice? So when you go to law school, they teach you theory. Mm -hmm. They really don't even teach you the practice specific. You know, you don't have a mentor. It's not like going to medical school where you're going to do a residency. Yeah. You go to school and you have the tools to then pass the bar and you've learned how to look at things analytically and critically, but, but you don't learn how to run a business. So, you know, the first thing you do is you do try to find mentors. And I have a lot of humility. I asked questions from everyone I knew that I felt was smarter than me, yeah. that I wanted to emulate, that I wanted to be like in some way, shape or form, whether it was their knowledge about, you know, personal injury, or if it was litigation, or there was their running their pre-litigation department, or if it was they're, they're marketing savvy. You yeah, know, there are yeah. so many different aspects to this than I ever anticipated. And because of the huge competition, you know, I took the, uh, the route where it was like grassroots. Like we, I, I knocked on the doors of so many doctors and just introduced myself and said, please trust us with one of your patients. This is what we're going to do for them. Yeah. And then I had to do it because they, I wanted them to trust me to send another one again. Of course. And then I wanted that client to trust me to later send their friend to me as well yeah. Yeah. because of the work we did. And, you know, if I don't, if I didn't do that, if, if I can't instill those same principles in the other lawyers that I hire to work with me, then 
when you grow, your practice isn't your practice anymore because you don't have that business scheme, yeah. biz, business yeah. schematic ready for everyone else to dive in and do it the way that you want to ensure it's done because that's what makes you different, right? Is your own exactly. method of running your business. So, Ooh, you know, you just opened the topic. You're definitely okay, going to we'll be just, coming we'll back open next time. We'll all those doors. Okay, <laughs> we'll no, that's really all those great doors. <laughs> because it's so important for people to understand that, you know, you could be a great doctor, but you need to learn business too. So, <laughs> it's, I mean, listening to you talk about the business plan, I thought, you know, I really do wish they would, but I, but one course, even a year is not enough. And yeah. It would be great if we had mentors, but our mentors are lawyers. They're not always a business person. Sure. And it's very, it's a real challenge for someone to be so forward thinking that they can develop this plan without really knowing what succeeded or failed yet. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a, it's a challenge and it's something that for me is ongoing. Like we're always trying to refine yeah. what we do so that it's for giving the client a great experience. Every time that's our goal is to be a lawyer that we're proud of being, yeah. understanding what their problem is so that we can help them fix it. And doing it with empathy and, and, you know, with developing a relationship and caring about them as a human being, not just a case file, you know. So. There you go. Here in Nevada, mm -hmm. Filipinos have really made their mark, you know, especially in healthcare, education. How does that make you feel? It's feel how do you like the, our society to view Filipinos? I'm proud. I've always been proud of being Filipino. Awesome. I, I... I was born there. I don't, mm -hmm. Did you know that? I was born in Davao. Oh, I yeah, I was that. born in Davao. And my Filipino family, this, that side of my family has always been the side that like I wanted to become like. Okay. Because, you know, as a kid, I had aunts that were doctors yeah. and engineers and college professors and uncles that were judges. And, you know, it was just like, I just believed I always believed I could do anything, yeah. and I and I kind of hear that repeated when I listen to other people in business who are also Filipino, you know, and it's something to really be proud of, that yeah. we kind of have this, if there's a stereotype, it's what? That we're hardworking. Yeah, I like that. And that our parents, <laughs> like, really are, are believe in us, and mm -hmm. they instill that belief in us, so that that then makes us believe we can do things that maybe we otherwise wouldn't have believed we could achieve. So, I mean, I mean, I, I love seeing, I love meeting other Filipinos here. Like they do, they're not just healthcare, but I'm super proud of the health. Yeah. I'm super proud that so many are in healthcare yeah. and, and teaching. And I mean, every facet, I see Filipinos in every facet of every area in this town, whether it's entertainment, uh -huh. television, 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 radio, <laughs> business, banking, you know, I mean, Law, there are some, and I mean, like you mentioned, we have someone running for judge. That's yeah. pretty phenomenal. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty phenomenal. My own brother, I don't know if you know this, but he is also a personal injury attorney, one of the only other Filipino there you go. personal injury attorneys in town. And I have another colleague at my office who is as well. So I love it because I think that I've always been proud of um, that particular part of me. Awesome. And I think that I love the rest of the world being exposed to how really amazing. Yeah. You know, I didn't ever realize they that maybe I, I don't even know if there is a perception otherwise, other than we're hardworking and amazing people. And I love that perception. I think it's amazing. Well, I like so, that too. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> well, lastly, t tell us. So for young Filipinos out there aspiring to follow a dream, what would be your best advice? Well, in hindsight, a plan would be really good. A plan would also be really good. I've been envious always of people who knew what they wanted to do from the beginning. I've been more of a person who has loved everything they've tried. So mm -hmm. I would say don't be afraid to try. Okay. Do try to develop a plan. And I'm, I'm serious about that. And I think the best way to do that if you're not maybe in a business school or something mm -hmm. is a mentor. I, I truly believe that you'll learn the greatest things you can learn about what it is you want to do, whether it's medicine, television, yeah. performing, writing. I think you're going to learn that most from someone who has lived it and experienced it because 
where else are you going to get that valuable information? I think school is incredibly important for so many things. And I think part of that school is sometimes not in school. It's from someone that is in school you because they've lived it. I, and I, I think that's important. And I do, I love what I do. Good. I think I'm sometimes codependent, loving, helping people so much. So I do love it. And I'm grateful that it turned out that way. I probably would have quit, right? A long time ago <laughs> if I didn't love it. But I do believe that if you want to do something and you love it, then get a mentor. Learn to do it the best way you can. Find someone who does it the way you want to do it and ask them. They're probably going to be really, really proud and really, you know, maybe surprised uh -huh. that you're looking up to them yeah. and, uh. and are asking them to mentor you. And I think that people would be surprised how many people, how many missed opportunities they might have because they didn't go talk to that person. Because where else are you going to learn to emulate what you're, what you want to emulate, yeah. Yeah. but through that person that you admire who does it. So like, that's what I, I would ask. I would, I would learn in school and then from the master, whoever, I, whoever that might be in whatever industry it is. So. Oh. There you go. Somebody mm -hmm. might be knocking on your door. Say, hey, mentor me, please. <laughs> I'll keep working on that business plan so that they have some, something to help them with. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. That was awesome. Thank you. Congratulations. And we wish you all the success, of course. And uh, thank you so much. That. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're All very right. welcome. <laughs> All right, that is our show for tonight. Have a great evening, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.